Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa. On the mic today is my husband John. Hey guys. We're coming to you live from our studio, which means this is happening right now in real time if you're here right now, yes. but you might be here on the replay. So thank you for coming by because we always leave these up after. Mm -hmm. Today we are doing, uh, now this was supposed to be a two-parter, ended up being a three-parter. <laughs> We're doing the second part of this sort of viewer experiment where we collaborated together, you and me, and designed a character. So this is based on viewer suggestions that happened from a live before this, which I think is in the iCard. And so you guys gave me a bunch of ideas. It got real big in scope, turned into a landscape. And I was like, well, we are a portrait class right now. So let's at least create this character's portrait before we do the landscape. Actually, mm -hmm. that was John's idea. Oh, was it? Yeah. OK. We have a bunch <laughs> of new people who've come and joined our art journey. So you know that we're already this last Sherpa. month, like so many new people. So to all yeah. the new people on the it's channel, like, hi, how are you guys we, it's doing? It's so many new people. We're over, over, already over three hundred. We are already <laughs> Sherpa here. We just, you know, it's just been that. Sherpa, kind of yeah, day. Sherpas. If we get over three hundred, because I don't know for some reason we think we're attacked by Sparta. <laughs> I don't know. Sparta comes for, you know, Greece and uh, you know artists at the same time. I kind of. That's kind of true. Okay, so <laughs> something happened there. Something, something. Artists, some artists went down. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> if this is your very first live, say hi to everybody. I should have I should have music on for you. I just you realized should. I, I, you should. You should. We should do a little dance. So while we're turn. doing yeah. the, we got everybody here because whenever we get to 300, we do a little dance, and sometimes little bubbles, but bubbles are not hooked up, so I'm just gonna dance with that. My bubbles, which bums me out. I like my bubbles. My bubbles. If I don't have my bubbles, I'm totally bummed out. So what we do here is we teach art. I go through every step of the painting, even on <laughs> bubbles are fixed. And we keep it fun and not too serious. And that's to help you guys along the way. I'm going to explain to you everything you need to know. We do have a traceable available for you on the website. You can print that out at your computer. I want to talk to you about that real quick if you're doing that. I really like the General's Charcoal White Pencil for these where I make my own traceable. What I do is I come make a rubbing everywhere I have a line and then I tape this down several places and I trace over all my lines transferring the image to my canvas. Many of you might ask, but isn't that cheating? In grade school if I traced anything everyone called me cheater and that was very stressful and traumatic. I don't want to tell you, your friends were misinformed. That's not cheating in art. That's a skill you actually have to get good at. You have to be able to transfer because designs can take several iterations. You have elements you want to keep, as you guys learned in this design quest, and elements you want to let go. And transferring that through tracing paper is part of that process, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, Let's yeah. cut our materials today. Okay. So I'm going to take my gorgeous, awesome, fabulous... I really love her. Does anyone else really love her? Well, yes, over three, almost 360 people love her. You guys did a really I good like job me. designing her. I Hi, did add everybody. your suggestions here. We got the the dragon scaling in the skin. Um, she's clearly mischievous. We made her a wild woodland fairy, but like a dragon fairy. We definitely did some fantasy skin. I gave her a headdress to really sort of interplay the type of a wild woodland fairy she might be and we did some beading we did some feathers fall leaves the dragon eye gemstone which was a suggestion somebody guessed that i would do it purple which was kind of a trip <laughs> and we even got to play with some gold paint so we'll look at our materials okay i took a 9 by 12 canvas board and i painted it black with black colored gesso Here's the news. You can often buy canvases already just out of black, and sometimes they're on sale, so it could actually be cheaper than anything just to get them done. But mm -hmm. if not, you can just paint it black with black paint. It doesn't even have to be gesso. I have, in my palette, I have heavy body paint. What happened here? What did I do here? What did you do? I don't know. Do you see I took away all my... What? How did you check your arm sleeves? I'm so afraid. Did your arm... Did you get no. your... Arm? No. No? No. Check the bottom of cup? No. Cinnamon, it was actually looking, where could it have gone? Look around. I'm so disturbed. Look at the back of the canvas, maybe? Back of my, you, dude, somewhere on me is a glob <laughs> of Indian yellow paint. I'm looking from here I to see if see, I can spot it. See, this is how you know it's a live show, because really weird things go wrong. Do, do, 
you can tell it got drug away by something. I think that there there are there there are definitely like studio gnomes that run away. It's not on me. I keep feeling under my <laughs> arms, and it's not on me. Okay. Well, wherever it is, it'll show up at some embarrassing moment all over my face. They look green. <laughs> <laughs> Thalo blue, dogs any purple, which probably to your eye at home looks black. Uh, yellow ochre, cad yellow medium. I have a cad red light here, and I have Indian yellow and burnt sienna. I have titanium white. We're also going to be using some fluid white for some reflections and iridescent gold deep fine for some gem work. But those aren't necessary. You can exchange those out. The other thing I want to say is you can um, also, instead of the CAD uh, light medium, do naphthol red light just fine. And if you have any yellow deep, you can exchange that for the Indian yellow. So don't feel trapped in that area in any way for this piece. Just, you know, work what you have. So that's what I've got. Water and brushes for acrylic paint, and I'm just waiting to find out where that glob of paint went. Where? Hi. Uh, hi. I was trying to get the right key up there, but somewhere it's, it's, I've got it here. Drinking my coffee, my sippy sippy. I'm going to start out. So a couple things I did here when I did the transfer. There it is. I did not include the leaves here because I can freehand those in easily in the feathers or the dragon eye. Because, mm -hmm. again, I'm going to put those in after I paint everything in. If drawing is not your thing, go ahead and do the whole traceable and just carefully paint around. It'll slow your production time down a little bit, but it'll relieve your stress. If you're really great at drawing, definitely add these after. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I'm so worried that it's going to be on my face. You know I am. I'm like freaking out. <laughs> oh, we're all going to be watching for it. Where did the I'm Indian gonna yellow go? going to pull some brushes I think I'm going to be using aside. So I'm pulling aside. These are uh, assortment of acrylic brushes. Acrylic brushes should be firm enough. If you're doing heavy body paint, they should be firm enough for the heavy body paint. I'm going to be using a couple brights here, which is these squares, and I'm going to be using a couple filberts. Okay. These are black pearls by uh, Silver Rush. So that's what I'm using. More information about everything is in the description below. Yes. I'm going to come over, get my brush wet, and drag off extra water. Okay. And I think I'm going to start, I like to start by, for some reason, putting in the first value on her nose. Okay. And I'm going to take a little of my phthalo green over to my Indian yellow, which you could be using yellow deep. And I'm going to just... Start that first value over here, painting this in. So this area is going to be lighter than her face. And I'm what I'm implying in this painting when I was doing her is I wanted to think about how she could hide mm. in her woodland state. Right? Like, like she would not be easy to find. No. If she did not want to be found. And so, you know, we talked a lot about where she lived and what she was up to. And I gave her the surprise face because later we're going to have that wonderful scene with the dragon and an egg. And one of the things when you're looking at your traceable, she's going to look scared. The reason I gave you guys smaller pupils is because it's real easy to over enlarge pupils mm. in the irises. So by making those all smaller, which gives her a scared look. I'm giving you guys room to take her to a surprise look, which is the big pupil. Gotcha. Yeah, it's just a size. And I didn't put eyelashes on her because, you know, she's dragon. Ah. Uh -huh. Aha. I'm going to get some more yellow on my brush here. I'm going to be using a lot of my glazing liquid. If, you, if you're doing portraits, I highly recommend gloss glazing liquid. Let me definitively say it is not the same thing as Liquitex glazing liquid. Those are two totally different products. They seem like they're the same because their names are so similar. I'm going to come right to the top of the nose here with this lighter color and just softly brush some of this. And you can see it's just giving a, a depth, right, that we're feeling in her face. I'm going to come back and get a little more green. Just blending this in. Takes a few minutes. Yeah. These portraits, like our, just like our geisha took some blending, she's going to take a little blending. Are we bubbled? I'll bubble all day. You, I know. I'm coming bubbles. along underneath her headband, and I'm making this area a little darker. 
coming along this part of their nose. I, I do want this to be light in the center, but I want there to be some blending. So it's really about, you can just see them layer, layer, layer. Mm -hmm. By not putting so much water on my brush, let's get some more of our, our Indian yellow here, your yellow deep. It's going to allow me to do a lot of in canvas layering. All right, so I'm working that here. Just you can just sort of see how that does there, and I'm just dusting that out. I'll zoom in even more so they can see closer. It's fun stuff. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, so weird. So this is just just working that out. And you're, you know, you're really trying to, you're implying like a blush or multi skin tone. I'm going to take this, wipe this and put this aside. And I think I want an even smaller bright. This is a number two bright. It's ruby set silver. These tend to be a little firmer and I want to work some little areas here. I'm going to get my cad yellow. It's going to give me some brighter, brighter green. I'm going to get a little of my white on here. And just right here at the edge, I'm going to pull this little highlight along this reflective surface. See that kind of happening there? Across the top. Right across the top. Just adding that in. Maybe a little more yellow even. And just coming here. This is creating the shape of her nose. I want her nose to be adorable, but still feel alien, if that makes sense. Now I'm going to load a bunch of yellow onto my brush, but it's got a dusting of my green pigment in it. And as you can see, if I'm not rinsing out, that easily corrupts the yellow, which I want. I'm going to get a little of my high green. I'm going to come here and I'm going to Oh, that's a good light color. I want a good light color. I'm going to make these little, can you see I'm working just the edge of my brush here? These little scales. Oh, yeah. see because you guys asked for some scaling. I'm making these dashes. I'm not doing little orderly rows. I wanted her scaling to feel a little little feminine. So it's a very soft, implied scaling that you can catch. Isn't that nice? Yeah. like it a lot. Rinse that out. Wipe that off. Now under here, I got into a lot of my phthalo turquoise mm -hmm. and all of that. And so how that's done is I'm going to take a little of my phthalo green and my phthalo blue. And I mix them together. And with this dark, dark color at first, I'm going to come right under the nose and around the nostril. Now, how many hoots do you say this is? I would say she's the same as Geisha or Galaxy Girl. She's, she's a two and a half, three hoot painting. Yeah. Even with the traceable. So if for everybody new, who's new here, we, we, we grade our paintings on a scale of one to three. And generally one to three hoots. You know, on one hoot being a pretty easy hoot. <laughs> yeah, it's very easy. And three hoots being a little more difficult if you're a new hoot. If you're a very new hoot, do a one hoot. <laughs> but know that even if you're one hoot, know if today you're watching this and you're thinking, man, I don't even do stick figures. This is never going to be me. It really can be you. Yeah. This can totally be you. I'm going to come up in the upper brow and I'm going to start putting down this value of acrylic paint. I'm just working that there. Yep. It's very dark. It's almost a black, isn't it? It is. To the eye. But now on my camera, so here's an interesting thing. A lot of things that don't look back black to your eye, I mean, that don't, that, yeah, don't look black to your eye will look black on camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I have, to, I have to carefully adjust it so often. Yeah. And uh, plus, camera is with. very tricky. It tricks. Yeah. Super tricky. It is. So I'm just going to work this brow bone here now above the, the eye. I'm going to come into my green. 
I've still not rinsed off my phthalo though. And I'm gonna get, interestingly enough, this is gonna be more in my cad yellow. You can also work into your ochre if you need it to be less vibrant. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna come under here. I just need it to feel different significantly. And I'm gonna let a little of that deep value permeate there of this blue holding those two spaces as I'm softly blending and shading this over. And I'm gonna to start to pull this down her cheekbone. Like that, it's just starting to fill in. This is, I think, um, a super enjoyable way to paint. It's not speedy, mm -hmm. but it is enjoyable. And it's very meditative <laughs> and healing. I have to say we have a, we have a whole lot of a whole lot of sherpettes in here with us. They're just having a really really good time in chat today. <laughs> and so I always wanted to say hey to everybody. They're just a lot of them are saying that they're just uh, they're here to definitely chat and you, they do the painting afterwards. Yeah, a a lot of people say that they're like I watch it, I chat with my friends, mm -hmm. and then when I have my time in my quiet space. I then watch it at home again. Mm -hmm. And I think that's actually probably a pretty smart way and a good tip for success. Yep. I think that's why the people who do that tend to have really successful paintings is by watching it with friends and having a good time in the party and the laugh, right? You're still picking up kind of the process. You're getting a sense of it. And then when you go back through and rewatch <laughs> the stuff that needed to stick with you, it sticks. Well, there's an so interesting. I'm just shading this as I'm going around. We have an interesting hello from Nepal. Uh, wow. Sanada, Sen, uh, Sanada, Sen, Hi, Sanada from Nepal. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm trying my best there, but yeah. So she's done uh, five paintings in one week. Wow. <laughs> so she's like, this, I think it was her first live. She's really happy to be here. Welcome so this, to your first live. We hi, wander guys. around. It's a whole thing. Yeah. Say hi to everybody. Hello, everyone. Man, oh my gosh. It's just, uh, so uh, first of all, let me just say thank you to everybody because we have a, we've, of course, we've had a huge crowd here. I'll give Cinnamon some bubbles. Make her Texas go. Texas Snowflake. Do her. Do her. You know, we, normally when we hit 300, we like to turn on the on the bubbles and make sure that we dance because we like to celebrate when we all get together here. And we've just been, we've had such a big group of people here. We may as well just do a little dance anyway. So thank you guys for coming. Thank you for being part of our our, our, our community here. And, uh, you know, if you're at home and you, and you can't get up and dance, don't forget to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes because it's important for you to get up and dance with us too. So thank you guys for coming. And thank you to all of our moderators and all of our community. So... I'm just having fun painting. Yeah, I know you are. My dance and paint. <laughs> dance and paint and click. I don't know if there's a side effect from a lot of bubbles, but if there is, I'm wound up with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the test subject. So I'm going to get into my yellow ochre, which gives me a much more muted green. And mm -hmm. I haven't rinsed my brush. You can see that I'm just going around. This is just a nice number two bright. You don't have to have a whole bunch of really nice brushes. You can just get a few and then just take really good care of them. And I think a good number two bright is a good brush to have on hand because it gives you control if you want to be an artist who's doing some detailed work. Now the traceable is on just the highlighting the brow here. There's a link to there's a link to the uh, to our website right in the right below, mm -hmm. and you can find the traceable there. You can find all of the images there for reference, and all of the all the materials and things are there's a bunch of information there for you. So, uh, and well, we'll yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I'm putting a slight highlight here, and since it's here, if you think of her face as a ball. Even though she's a fan, so she's a fantasy character. I don't have a reference for her. Mm -hmm. So I have to understand how lighting works. I'm going to put a little lighting here in this front part of her eye. See how it would catch both of those? Yes. And this would then be more in shadow. Does that make sense, everyone? Just saying. I think so. Okay. Just didn't want anyone to not know why I was doing that. <laughs> oh, no. It's I'm good you explain it. Dusting, 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 dusting my... My character. Huh. I love character paintings. Okay. We're adding a little bit of a highlight here to the cheek. Mm. Like you do. I might put one right here underneath the eye over here. So how long did it take you to come up with this face? 
Well, actually, you know, we had the meeting last week yeah. where you guys gave me suggestions. Um, and I really wanted to show you guys how uh, my process is neat and tidy. Some artists, like, I call them forensic artists. Um, you, you see them do sketch sketches in police houses or their study, their field of practice is figure and face. Right, so they've specialized in this. And when they sketch out an idea, it's real clean, it's real resolved. That's not my process, it never has been. And I just wanted everyone to see like, when I'm doodling, it's kind of like a really crazy mess. And then what I do is I take it to my drawing board and I do 10, you know, maybe sketches where I'm, you know, resolving ideas and thinking things out more slowly. And then I come to a final sketch. And I actually posted the Big Art Squatch, some sketch, Quest some of those sketches. And it's on the website as well on the page. So you can see, oh, well, this was a little bit weird. And if you go back and look at that previous quest, you'll be like, wow, like you go from there to there. You don't necessarily know to keep iterating. Sometimes if you do a sketch and it doesn't look amazing, you think, oh, I'm no good at this. Mm -hmm. And you quit when I just needed four more sketches. Tracing so paper, very powerful tool. So that was really so yeah that was a uh, that was really interesting that you you shared all that up on Facebook and on our yeah. website and showed everybody what you were doing through the process. So. I'm getting a little of the ochre and the white on there to create an even lighter value, but I want to warm it with my ochre. Yeah, I really did. I like to share the process. Now you're going to keep doing that this week, yeah? Posting yeah. more um, images Yeah, as up I there. go to the landscape and mm -hmm. we're designing the dragon and the next part of the process. Yeah. I think it's valuable for people to know that um I gotta get. I'm losing the doing? fluidity, so I'm gonna go oh. into my glazing medium here instead of water. I could have used water, uh -huh. and I'm going to create an inner light to the eye. Just a value that I'm starting to talk about now. And I might have one right here. I think. So we're just working those things out. There's a lot of good ideas for paintings coming through. I'm See? making. I've got little notes over here that I'm taking. Do you? Yeah. So That's it, uh, awesome. I, I know that you're in the middle of the painting, but you know yeah, there, there's, no. there's a lot of people who get a lot of good ideas. You know, so if we thinking. find this has a lot of value for us mm -hmm. as a community, mm -hmm. as an art community, and as, you know, and and if you guys, as you know, my students go, oh, this really helps me, and we get through this week intact, we could do something similar again. <laughs> we we have to make it through the first one. <laughs> we have to make it through the first one, though. So I'm just trying to add these like highlights. I put a little more blue into this. And do you see how it's almost like a blush? Yeah. So this is, you know, what I'm kind of always doing. I'm kind of just fiddling. Are you fiddling? Me, you got to uh, fiddle. I'm, I'm trying to read chat and push buttons. John doesn't fiddle. He reaches out and pushes buttons. I'm going to have a little dark value here. I'm going to come in with a darker value. I'm getting back into my phthalo green here. I'm going to rinse my brush. So the thing is, is if you're working with a lot of harmonies and you're just changing values, you don't necessarily have to rinse your brush a lot, but it can start to dry. The paint can start to dry on there, so you do have to sort of pay attention to that somewhat. Just keep coming here. There's going to be a really dark value put under her nose. Mm-hmm. But right now I'm just trying to talk about these fields around her face and the depth of features, right? Because we're determining depth of features into her face. How deep set are the eyes by how, how much how I highlight them or shadow them. I'll rinse this off. Another uh, color that you can use to enrich your palette here is your Burnt Sienna. And your phthalo green will create a deep shadow value that will really feel very foresty. See that? Really very foresty. And so I'm going to come in the temple. Just make sure I have that. And then right along her lid line here, we're going to, I'm taking this like where it's deep into the blue. So this is more blue into my phthalo turquoise. And I'm just making sure that this kind of surprise crease along her eye is well conceived and thought out. Doing the same over here because she's surprised. And since she's younger, the muscles in her eye will pull more from the center. Hmm. Weird tip. 
she were older, they would pull more from the outside. But she's got great eye tone, so it's still from the center. Weird little things that you can do to talk about the age or origin or something of a fantasy character. Interesting. And that fun to do this, isn't it? Now, when I was parsing her out to you guys, I did elements in a weird order, so you'd be sort of surprised by certain things. I'm going to get some of my thalo turquoise, but we're going to actually resolve this area in here before moving out. Ha uh ha, -huh, you didn't know that was going to happen. Mm -mm, did not. Did not. Joel's like, I don't know anything that's going to happen before I, we get here. I do not. <laughs> I generally don't get to watch you do the, the, the study. I'm so. going to make a little highlight under the nose here with my lighter colors. Just so that we can see that. Now, I do have black paint out, but areas that I want to feel like black but not have... See, this is sort of a matte black, and it's a little bit deadened. There's only some areas I want that. Mm. So where I want the feeling of black, but I don't want to use black, I'm going to make my mix of phthalo blue and cad red light. You see that right there? Mm -hmm. And if you want, like, we have a whole quest on this. If you guys want to drill down on that from 2016, <laughs> where we did Salvador Dali. All right, so see, I'm doing that in her nostrils now. Yeah. And I'm going to just pull that shadow down under her nose. And maybe even talk about it a little bit here at the, the crease so that this nose is a little defined. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Come on, little eye line here. Just a touch with this color. See, this good brush is really, really my friend. Really, really, my friend, good brush. You're my good, good friend. I like you, good brush. You're my good, good friend. You help me out so much. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. If you didn't know, I'm weird. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to come along this inside lid. I'm going to deepen that line and extend it on the tear duct. But I have to really protect the opening around the eyes. It's really easy to lose the surprise. Now, what brush are you using there? This is a number two ruby satin bright. So the size of the brush is two. You can see it's small. It has a very sharp edge, super sharp edge. Mm-hmm. And it's nice, and it just gives me a lot of control. Gotcha. That's what I'm looking for. I need control. Very controlling painter. No, I'm not really. <laughs> but, you know, you do what you got to do. I'm going to take a little of this deep color, and where I feel like there would have been shadows, I'm just going to shadow it up. Just shadow it up. So you'll see a lot of painters, especially in the hyper-realistic community. <laughs> They're saying that you can't sing a song about a brush and not tell them which one you're using. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I had, but you know, that's cool. <laughs> I'm happy to share. It's no big. You're, just, you're, you're generally I'm getting happy. a little more white on here, huh? You're just generally happy if you're singing and painting. Yeah, I am. So I'm just adding even more of a highlight here. See? She's just having a whole moment, right? Yeah. Let's talk about inside of her eyes. So I'm going to take a little of my phthalo green dust, 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 dust over to my yellow ochre. And you know what I'm going to do? My paint's been out a long time. Mm. So I'm going to mist it. Mist it. Because it's probably feeling thirsty. <laughs> it's, it's threatening to cure. And I was like, don't cure. Only the cure can cure. So Jackie was saying. Hi, Jackie. She's like, why is this young maiden so frightened? Well, in our story, she's seeing something, <gasps> oh, right? Remember yeah. we had a dragon and That's there was an true. egg and we were like, is she holding the egg? Where is the egg? We were kind of going around that. We had some stories. Some of you guys wrote some stories and some poems. Listen, I highly encourage you if you feel like you want to be brave and share those in the big art quest on Facebook. That is the community to share them with. There's a lot of love there. Um, but share, shared some stories, shared some stuff, and it kind of informed me, and I realized that she's she's witnessing maybe something her people haven't seen in a while. Mm. 
that's kind of what I ended up with after listening to you guys for a while. Is like, she's seeing something special, and she's a connection to this dragon, and this is an amazing moment. Maybe, like, and look, am I a Game of Thrones fan? Yeah, I totally am. So if you haven't seen a dragon in like a thousand years, you might be a little excited if you saw a new one. Right. Right. Are we ready for GOT? <laughs> <laughs> so now, the, sorry. <laughs> the, the other reason that you had made them kind of small was so that if, it, it, as is as people are doing them, if they get bigger, it's easier. So, yes. Um, when we're, you mean like around? What do you mean? You, you said you made the the pupil small. Oh, okay. I can show you real quick. So, this is a good thing. <laughs> sorry to deviate. So you see how here she looks surprised, and here she looks scared. Hold on, let me. Surprised, scared. Okay, yeah. That is about this and the size of this. So the reason in the traceable, because I've had a lot of students, so I kind of know what messes with you guys. If I make this all a little bit smaller, when you trace it in and start to paint it, you won't take the pupil all the way up to the upper lid, which is going to take away your surprise. She'll be big-eyed, but she won't be surprised. For it to be surprised, you've got to see the whites of the eyes above the color of the pupil. For it to be scared, it's a small pupil. For surprise, it's a big pupil. This tells you that she's excited, but not necessarily afraid. This means she's excited and afraid. Gotcha. That helps. That's helpful, but yes. maybe you don't know that. Well, I think that you know people innately know this, but it's 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 another thing to be able to to know to put that into your painting. Yeah, and how and 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 where to do that? Yeah. Yeah. So I think, and that's that's an act of practice. So in the whites of her eyes, I don't really want a white, and I want a vague green tint. Because, right, our skin tone, our skin colors, all of that, it's. It's throughout, right? It's in our capillaries. It's in our eyes. So if we have, you know, rosy skin, it's in our eyes. You know, if we have warm skin, it's in our eyes. Those values are uh, throughout. And so when you're trying to create a fantasy creature, those are things that you definitely, definitely want to keep honoring throughout your painting. So I'm just making sure I'm getting this good... She's looking pretty surprised there. <laughs> I'm going to get all fiddly in a minute. I'm going to rinse this out. Now, in her eye, let me find a, a really fiddly brush. What do, you, what do you mean by fiddly brush? Oh, tiny. So I'm going to pull these two little suckers out. This is a 00 Bright by Brissolon, and this is one of my um, Sherpa Red Handles that's got a nice detail on it with a firmer filament, and I'm going to be doing some detail work in her eye. So first, I'm going to take my detail brush. You, this would be like a zero or one in any, any line. And I'm going to get just a little red into my blue to gray it out. But I want it to be slightly blue. And then I'm going to get my white. Because I want her under eye, which would be pink on us, on her, is going to have a blue cast in the tear duct. So I've got this little tear duct here, right? And then I'm going to do the lower lid for shortened, which we're going to see. See that? Slight blue. Yeah. Subtle stuff makes a difference. It's the kind of thing that makes a difference. I know you all want me to be on face off now, but I just can't. So busy. <laughs> busy painting faces. Busy painting faces. <laughs> That'd be funny. Uh, let's just send Lex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> I'll cheer for her. So, what's so I'm just creating this tear duct in this line here. Do we know what her name is? Well, they need to name her. Yeah? Uh, if I name her, let's be honest, if I name her, she's going to be Dragon Fairy with green skin and purple dragon eye. <laughs> yeah, with feathers. With feathers. That's going to be her name. Right. Could we, we can, we may even shorten that to Dragon Lady with Feathers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just lighten my blue, and I'm coming in and just adding a little bit of this highlight here in the tear duct. 
So can they and along this outer edge here? So can we do it so they they, they can leave their uh, thoughts in the description? You just tell me. You can give me name suggestions in the comments below. You can give me name suggestions on the website. You can give me name suggestions on Twitter and even the Facebook page where I posted her picture and said, y'all need to name her because mm. I just can't deal. And we'll just look around for one. Well, now there's a bunch of yellow on my pinky finger, but I don't know why. Where is this yellow? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's here. Where did the Indian yellow go? Is, is it on the back of the canvas? Oh my god, it's gonna be so we're so weird. <laughs> it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be on the back of the camera. It'll be on the back of Robo Camera. Some where some be. crazy location. All like, right, let's put some highlight there? blue in here. Just putting some highlight blue in there. So nice, so nice. Now I like I like this value. I'm going to keep working that value. I'm going to get my smaller brush with my yellow ochre and a little smidge, smidge of green. It's really interesting working teeny tiny brushes because usually I, if you want to paint expressively, your brushes get bigger. If you want to paint realistically, your brushes get smaller. Weird thing that I've noticed. So I'm just creating that second value here around the eye. Now I'm taking this in. Is the pupil going to get bigger than what's here? Yes. But I'm creating the space because I've got to shade these like they're marbles inset in her eyes. That's fun. <laughs> May not be fun. You might be like, man. There's, there's a lot of good names out there. Painting is not super fast and immediate, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's about layers. It's got layers, like there's some ogres. Layers. Ogres have a lot of layers. I will tell you that right now. I'm painting ogre. Yep. Be at it for a while. Shrek was not wrong. That was a joke from the artist. I bet you it was. I bet you the artists were like, ogres like onions have so many layers. <laughs> Just keep skinning this thing all day. It's never going to render. <laughs> okay. So I have my very dark color here. Right. I'm going to be coming under the eye. Coming under the eye. And look, I'm creating a little shadow what the lid would be leaving, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit here. And then here at the corner, let's put in a little shadow. Shadow, shadow, shadow. But not a whole lot. Don't go crazy. Guess what? If you get go crazy, just let it dry and paint it out and then repaint it. So, I mean, don't feel like, oh, no, I went crazy. It's all over now. It's not. Not remotely over. What's nice about it still being black here is I can work to that edge and not lose out any of the detail I worked there. See? Look at that. It's all shady. Ooh. Now, on this inside corner, I'm going to definitely want to shade. Maybe a little bit there. Because that would be a little bit in shadow, right? Yeah. So now, these eyes that she's got have some shape that are starting to happen. We still have a bright highlight to work in, and we still have our pupils to work in. But we're now getting to get a sense of who she is, don't we? We know her better. We've been with her a second. Yeah, I'm using two yellows look at me go living wild living large loading my brush with white I'm going to create a light value here coming inside the lid down the tear duct a little bit look at that coming around I did not give her lashes now you were saying that earlier. For a reason. For reasons. For reasons. <laughs> <I'm gonna> come <laughs> under here with this light color right under the eye here. And the reason she didn't get lashes is I felt like a dragon-based being would probably not have a bunch of hairs. Probably, probably not. I did not see a lot of hairy lizards when I was looking at lizards. Yeah, you know, I don't. Reptiles. I don't. No, I don't think so. I haven't seen a lot of those. Much more likely to have feathers. That, that's sort of a mammal thing. Yeah, it really is. And so I've got this hair here, but I think 
some of what kept her feeling like, you know, the being she is. This is my phthalo turquoise again. Some of what kept her feeling like the being she is, is that we just stayed very true to that. Get back. I just wiped off, man. I don't I even sometimes rinse. Because sometimes these colors, they just layer up in a nice way. Sometimes you fool me when you're going, you wipe off. And before yeah, you go, I, just I like do. Me. All right, here we go. Coming up under the lid. Here we go. There we go. Choo, choo, choo. Let's keep going. I might need some fluid paint to improve my flow. Just taking a stronger shadow line and developing it, see? Yeah. And then definitely need a little of this right here to this outer edge, this dark value. And I'm going to take a little of this dark value to this outer edge right here, leaving some light there. Rinsing out. I'm going to just be fussy and put a little of my Indian yellow here and along the lid line. The disappearing Indian yellow. It just, it warms the green and I like it. Now, I can take this color. That and color I being can add, this is the Indian yellow, mm -hmm. and add a little white to it to improve its opacity. And then around here, I'm going to dab scales with this small brush. See that? Mm-hmm. So that we get the sense that maybe she's got kind of a framing or a keyhole of scales. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. So nice. And I can take this color right now to her top lip. Some more Indian yellow and a little of my glazing medium to improve it. There's just a little bit of lip peeking through. And now you get a sense that this warm kind of yellow color that she has, right, is, you know, maybe akin to our blush. Ah. I'm adding a little brown to this mix here, and I'm going to just shade the outer edge of the lip here just a touch. I just want it to be dimensional. Just it needs to be a little dimensional, otherwise I'm just not going to believe in it. Mm. So my first color I'm going to put here is, believe it or not, I'm going to come in with a little of my chromatic black. And I'm going to start thinking about the size of this pupil now. I need to keep a space between the top of this and the lid, or she's not going to look surprised. She's going to look mildly alert. There we go. I don't want her to just be mildly alert. While I'm letting that dry and rest, I'm going to rinse my brush, get a little bit of white. I'm going to come here to the inside of this eye and dry brush a highlight into the backside, dry brush a highlight. Mm. Over here, not taking out all of my other color, I'm dry brushing a highlight. I'm wiping off. And I'm picking up just a dusting of my shadow color on a very dry brush. I'm going to just make sure that this is a little bit in shadow and muted. See how that's sort of aged back? Mm. Like you do. Or like you do. By now, my um, 
uh, paint will have dried. So I'm going to take my yellow in my yellow, two yellows and a little white. And I'm going to come from the outer edge. I am not going to the very darkest outer edge of this eye. I'm leaving this dark ridge here. And I am dusting in the first layer of color to her eye. Now, are you going to be doing the, the further painting where she's just in the mirror? She's going to be, f some of her is going to be focused in the mirror. Gotcha. But she will, there'll be less. <laughs> less of her. Look, we're going to be painting a long time on the landscape. I don't even want to lie to you. <laughs> it's going to be a day. It's going to be a day. But sometimes that helps you guys know what you're involved in when you're doing projects like this, right? Let's get mm. some red. Some of our cataract skinning. Sometimes I have to put up paint when I don't want to because my studio is very dry. It's very dry. And I have an AC unit going, and so that really definitely impacts me. So I'm going to pull in a little of this red from the outer edges. Definitely a little of this red. Jackie thinks you could write an entire story or book around just this character. You probably could. My writer friends like it when I do their covers. <laughs> 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 All right. So here we go. I am just loading my brush. And I'm coming in with the first layer. I can always make bigger. It is harder to make smaller. You can. But you do want her pupils to be open or she's going to look scared. See? Hmm. Now we have this eye. It's got a little yellow. It's got a little red. It's got a little something, right? Mm -hmm. Once that's in, I'm going to take some black. This flat black. And they come from this left side and not all of the people, just some of it. Oh, yeah. Just some. I'll let that rest a second. Put out a little of my fluid white. Do I think this stuff is worth it? Yes, I do. It's clogged. Is it clogged? It's okay, because my new Sherpa Star dotting tool apparently also serves as it unclogged my paint bottles that I didn't close correctly. Does it? To oh, yeah, I see it. <laughs> see? Bubbles. You get some bubbles. While bubbles. You're doing all of the bubbles. Well, we've been double Sherpa, so I figure we get some bubble trouble. We're done. You guys like the painting? Thank you. I'm going to have John microwave my coffee. Yeah, She's my almost done. When we put she these reflections on her, she is going to be so alive. I do. Do you want to keep painting? Or you want me to I want to keep painting. And they keep painting. I gotta keep going, man. I gotta keep going. I'm gonna grab some just yellow ochre and just keep coming here. I'm gonna dry brush right here. I'm just shaving out the eye. See this nice little dry brush when letting everything sort of have a moment. There we go. Just keeping it bright. Keep it bright, man. Now I'm gonna take that chromatic color that I made and I'm going to create my first of my reflections which is not a bright white. I'm going to come in the eye and I'm going to add this muted reflection here and here. Rinsing this out well because boy do these love to just have a moment. I'm going to get my detail brush has a very fine point. And I'm going to come add a little tear duct moisture. You're just putting highlights on those? And I like to come along the lid line and just say that her eyes are wet. And I do that by creating that reflection right there. Super important reflection. I do the same over here. So this is achieved really by the quality of your brush and the fluidity of your paint. 
and also how light you can keep your hand. Because if you can keep your hand light, you'll be okay. Now I'm going to put in some more light sources. See, she's seeing some magic, so we got to give her a few light sources. There you go. Look at her now. She's a seeing something, isn't she? So now we have this in here, and she's starting to come to life, which is just crazy, and I'm going to sippy sippy my coffee. We can start putting in the other elements that make her feel like the magic creature she is. I like to do this with you this way this time because sometimes what happens in a longer painting is new people, you like get exhausted, and it's hard to see that the painting is going to come together. Yeah. So by doing this part to a resolved place, that gives you a sense of kind of hope and optimism that the rest of it will resolve. See how tricky. Hmm. <laughs> Is the coffee better? Oh, so good. I need some tea. Hmm? I'm tea this. I'm all out of tea. I need you need tea. some tea? I need tea. All right. Well, I mean, if you need some tea, get yourself some tea. I will. Nobody's I'll start stopping some tea your tea minute. journey. I'll get some tea. You're going to get some tea? Get some, yes. All right. So I, this doesn't have the number on it, but I'm sure it's a number six bright. <laughs> from my Sherpa Red Handles. I'm going to get this and I'm going to put in the basis of my headband, which is my Cad Red Light and a little of my Yellow Ochre. So it mutes the red just a smidge now, up here. Why did you do this on a black canvas? Because it's dramatic and it gives us a nice ground to work from. Gosh, now if you it makes our colors feel brighter and more lush and I'm really enjoying these. Okay. Right so now, as a as a substrate. Interesting. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. They were no, just no. a lot of people it, asking. This is literally why we're live, so you can ask me questions. And so the reason, if you guys, again, are not confident in your drawing, just paint around your objects. But the reason I'm doing it this way is so that our objects layer seamlessly and smoothly. Gotcha. Like, see, see how I'm shading this out? It's going to actually give me some shading here. Ah. Ah, isn't that cool? So what, stuff. what red were you using there? That was the Cad Red Light, which uh -huh. you could use Naphthal Red Light, and Yellow Ochre. Now I'm going to kind of put in her hair, which I'm really going to start as just my Thalo Green and my Yellow Deep Indian Yellow, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come in here. See, this is where I think it happened, but I, I don't know how it happened. It, it, that, that paint snuck off on you. Somewhere. And I'm going to just put in the basis of her hair. And yeah, her hair is green too because I, I want her to be believable that if she were hiding, you would not be seeing her. Oh, wait. I have to call Sherpa on this. How does Do she have a full head of hair but no eyelashes? Because, I said earlier, I gave her one. I just okay. didn't give her eyelashes. It's my world. Okay. I was just like, wait a minute. Gamers. It's like Let me tell you, when you make a gamer character, this is I'm so used to answering <laughs> these questions. I've learned to just be like, because I'm the artist, and I said so. And then they're like, okay. Yeah, I didn't like, you know, I could have either given her a head of feathers, uh -huh. right? That would have been one way to go, but I felt like it was fun to give her a head of hair. Yeah, she no, has I hair, don't... she just doesn't have eyelashes. Yeah, no feathers. I think I think that the giant. Well, she's wearing feathers. Yeah. No, I mean like yeah. I don't. I I don't. I'm not in with the down with the prehistoric chicken concept. Feathered T Rexes. You know, hey, why not? No, I don't think so. There's uh, there's more cause to that thinking than mine. <laughs> I think that they've 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 come back and said no, I don't think so. Hmm. Well, I think I read an article that was saying no, they don't think so. No. No. No, no feathers. No, We're no giving no. up on that. Yeah, I think that's really going to mess with everybody over there for uh, Jurassic Park. Yeah. So this is sort of the underpainting of our hair, and then so in hair we paint first the shape, and then we paint the highlights and shadows, and then you only focus on a few individual hairs. Yeah, Trish says it's our world. That's right. It's our world. Seriously, our world. We're so in charge here. So I'm, I'm, I think it's great. I just I thought it was just funny. <laughs> Maybe she scalped somebody. You could tell a further story. I don't know. Mm. This was that really punchy elf that was talking back <laughs> from the back of the control booth. <laughs> Elves can go down bad. <laughs> I'm not sure where that Indian yellow went. <laughs> you feel the veil threat? <laughs> 
So this little bit out here, so she's got her red orange scarf coming across here. And the reason I did orange is because these are contrasting colors. And so it makes these two elements, these warm colors, really pull against the green. Mm. And I like it. So that would be the other reason. So uh, th there, were, I saw a question come up here that I just that I just scrolled by too fast for me to see, but it was it was a it was a good question. It was when would you suggest that you you go to have your first critique done? All right. So the appropriate time to start seeking critique. Uh huh. Right, and I don't really think it's good to hit it before this, <laughs> though sometimes in schools they make you. Yeah. The appropriate time when a critique is useful is in your art journey, you are confident in 90% of your skill set, right? Not all art skills everywhere, but you kind of know your kit, what you like to paint, how you like to paint it. You're not asking questions like deep questions like, are there shadows here? You know where your shadows are. You've taken a bunch of workshops. You really have a basis of information. And you're starting to look for who you are as an artist outside of everybody else as an artist. Does yeah. this make sense? Yeah. So, you know, you kind of know who you are as an artist. And you're wanting to define that more. Going to a peer review, a critique at that point can be extraordinary because a good peer critique doesn't try to tell you if your art is good or bad. What you do is you would go up and you would say, listen, I'm feeling really good about this and this and this here, but I'm not really sure about these three things. And then your peers only speak to those three things. That's actually the appropriate way to ask for critique and receive a critique. You would say, I'm unconfident in my stylistic choice through these zones. And then your peers will say, well, have you considered trying these things in those zones to strengthen the style I perceive I'm seeing you attempt? Yeah. See how none of that's insulting? No, no. Just helpful? Can, and Real can critique. I, can I add to that? Because I've watched a lot of critiques. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've noticed is that as, a, as, an, as an observer, that artists, like when you're going in for a critique, oftentimes the room can see something that you're, you've looked at too much. Mm -hmm. So they can see that you may be like doing this fantastic job with your color expression or your, or your form or your design or your construction of different elements. And you just may not see it because it's so everyday for and you. And they might just have an idea or process that you're not aware of because you're now into that deep water, right? You're wading hip deep into the sea of creativity. Yeah. doing your thing and a really like a really good artist critique should leave you with several ideas that excite and liberate you it should never leave you with a feeling of dread yeah it should never f leave you feeling like you know you don't know differently now there's an there's an exception to this hmm. you're in a person's classroom okay so you've gone to a teacher you've signed up for a workshop you're taking the class that instructor may host a critique about the skills that you're learning. Right. And that's a different kind of thing, right? So you've, you've gone and you're taking a Dremel Parish kind of workshop, and she might be like, well, you're color mixing here. She might be talking to you specifically about what you're learning. Again, should not leave you feeling insulted, and wouldn't. Yeah. I'm using a specific workshop that would not leave you feeling insulted <laughs> right. for any reason. Because some people think that the purpose of critique is to be like, well, it's not really my style. That is not an okay answer in a critique. It's not really my taste. I, I, I go to a critique that literally, if somebody raised their hand and was like, it's not really my taste, they would be removed. Yeah. Because it's an inappropriate thing to say. It's an inappropriate blurt. You have to answer specifically to what you're speaking. Right. Have feelings on that? You did do. I just monologue you, like a villain again? Okay. I did. No, just uh, you know, maybe. I put out some more uh, Indian yellow. You know, you know, all it is is this room needs a bubble. This room needs a bubble. Have some bubbles flowing, flowing through the sky. I really love the flow of her hair. Yeah, I do too. So, that's kind of what you're doing. I really. I'm always worried when somebody comes in and is like, I'm trying to improve critiques welcome, and they just open it up to a floor of strangers. Really worries me. Mm, yeah. Because then you don't have control over the quality of advice that you get. 
you know, and yes, of course, in our Sherpa groups, we tend to have a nicer, nicer, nicer group of people. But even so, just going in on social media and be like, what do y'all think? Mm. And, and we owe our really nice room to a big thanks to all of our moderators who are hanging yeah. out in here. Just, you know, because they, they, they make sure that we everyone stays on topic and we know what we're doing. And, you know, that uh, we're, we're this is generally a, a focused place for us to be able to talk about art in a friendly environment. Now, I'm going to probably paint out my feather detail when I'm painting my scarf and then put it back. Mm -hmm. But again, if you guys aren't drawing, retain your feather detail and paint around. Yes? Yes. yes. Retain I'm letting my the hair detail. dry. I might come in and do my ear real quick, though. You I'm going to get my, n my number two bright that I was gushing on earlier. <laughs> and I'm going to get a little of my uh, green and my burnt umber. I'm going to come here. Olivia Owl has a question. Yes, I'm so happy to answer it. Well, she, she just has a question. She, it was a declarative, not oh, actually okay. a question. <laughs> there was no follow-up question? No, nope, there was just a declarative. She has one. Okay, well, if, if you get to the question part, I'm happy to get to the answer part. We and should. listen, after the show, we're going to go to the Art Sherpa website. There's a live chat there. And where is it at? The Red Room? Yeah, well, generally, you know... <laughs> yeah, the red room because that's that's we have a red one, this a blue is one, and not a, one. Um, a commentary on any particular was, movie or book. This no. is I'm just putting a highlight. So see, I added white to my mix, and I'm going to come highlight the tip of this ear. We actually had all three rooms, but the, the other ones broke. <laughs> so now so. It's just the red room of chat. The other ones are all back now, but now everyone just hangs out in the red one because it was Getting the one that was working. Just for a while. yellow here and highlighting this inside of the ear. Here. And then on the inside, I actually went deep into my thalo turquoise because I felt like, you know, ears are kind of like very capillary, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So let's do that here as well. No, what is uh, her question? What is what is the difference between acrylic gloss and varnish? Acrylic gloss medium, acrylic because there's a lot of things that will say gloss. So gloss, whenever you see it on a bottle of anything acrylic refers to the finish, the amount of shine. So you could have gloss gel, you could have gloss varnish, you could have gloss glazing liquid. Gloss medium. Yeah. Um, so that's about the finish. And generally, acrylic var uh, uh, products will come in the finish of gloss, satin, and matte. And that's you as a person deciding how much shine you want coming off of your polymer. And then you have products that are extenders, like gels. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you can add your pigment to that and extend your paint without, uh, you know, worrying about it not being um, as uh, robust, it, like it failing. Yep. Because if you add too much water, paint will eventually fail. Acrylic paint, it won't, it won't bind. You know, uh, if it's varnish, that's about sealing or finishing the painting. You know, but I mean, like straight up, could I use, could I use matte varnish to this whole thing? Yes, I could. I could add my brush to the, that works. Just saying. Gotcha. But I like it tends to be more brittle and have a little less flexibility than other products, and so I tend to use it for the finish. Now there's some there's some and things just about just adding this deep value. That deep value we learned to make in the ear. So see how that feels like an ear now? Yeah. So here we have a fantasy ear, and how we got that fantasy ear to look like a real ear. And I'm going to pull this little sort of shading back. Leaving the dark line along the ridge is um, just value. What do we learn from our ear quest, right? Mm -hmm. We did that whole quest on ears. <laughs> now we can do this fantasy ear, can't we? You can apply some ear techniques. All the same structures will can apply to her ear. Ear there skills. Go. There we go. So we have a nice little ear there. I almost put hairs coming out of her ear, and then I just thought, why am I doing that? I don't know. Why are you I doing don't that? know why I would do that to y'all, so I didn't. We're actually whipping through her faster than She will harden pretty, pretty quick. It's the fact that we have the feathers and the dragon eye. That's a bit of a deep, detail bit of kit. Yeah. And this beadwork about her that takes her a little bit longer. But this is how you get to these types of paintings. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take my cad red and a little of my Indian yellow and a little white. 
and I'm going to talk about my highlight runs. So this is the high color on my scarf. Right? I've got to, whenever I'm doing folded fabric, what I'm painting is peaks and valleys. Get the fluidity of that better, so I get a nice, nicer flow off my edge. Peaks and valleys, right? Peaks and valleys. So I'm going to just come here. And what I'm trying to say is there's these peaks and these valleys, these highlights and these shadows. And how I paint those and where I paint those determines kind of the shape of my fabric. And so I put these marks in initially so as I'm painting I don't lose them. All right what I feel like I would have. Now I'm going to come back and put all of our feathers and everything back. Post haste, I will, I will. Promise, promise, promise. But first I'm going to take a little of my blue over to my uh, red. And I'm going to add just enough to deepen it. It darkens it almost to like a brown brick. And at first you'll wonder if it's really red, but it really, really is. So I'm going to put a shadow right here. New one here. A little shadow down here. I'm gonna just paint these folds. And that's what I'm trying to talk about is these shadows. Let's put a shadow under here. You paint around your objects if you need to. Maybe I'm going to add one here. And I think I felt like there would be one here. So let's just talk about that there. So see how we're already starting to see the folds of the fabric? Yeah. Now she's got her scarf is blowing off. Into the distance there. Coming along. Just putting that in there. It's going to just enjoy working that. Now I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush because this shadow right here mm -hmm. is deeper and smaller. And sometimes I hold two brushes because that's just how I am. <laughs> We're going to define this space a little bit in a minute, but that's what we have going there. There we go. Now, I'm going to just wipe my brush off, and I'm going to get some of my red, and I'm going to come across my headband. And I'm going to add a dry brush of just the high pigment to a couple spots so that where her dragon eye is peeking out it'll feel nice and nice and interesting you can get a little of your yellow ochre into your red and i'm going to come here and i'm going to just dry brush and i'm going to let my black canvas even help me some right let my black canvas even help me some a little yellow and there we go. We're just painting the folds. <laughs> just painting the folds. Little yellows.
You're really focused here, I can tell. I am. I'm focused because I'm having to think about where do I want my highlights, where do I want my low lights. You're, I, I you're, don't want to lose any of the work that I put in. You're deep in thought. And it takes a few layers to work this out. So what are you being careful of here? So I'm just trying to make sure that I'm keeping a consistent set of highlights and shadows so that my scarf continues to feel folded. Like I just took out my shadow, so I've got to go back and be like, did I need that shadow? Was that a shadow that was necessary? And if it was, then I've got to come back and put it back in. Uh -huh, so you, to, to make the, the fold look more mm -hmm. complex. I'm trying to... Make sure that I'm keeping all of that bright and fabricy and that makes sense. You know the things you do that you do. Do you? I try to. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna come here and right under the ear. I don't want that. Why not? So I painted over some details that I really wanted. And before it's dry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take oh, it out. I'm going to go in there and check them out. Watch you do that. So my brush moved on me in a way I didn't like. So you just used water and scrubbed that out? I just used water and scrubbed it out. And I'm going to come back with a slightly smaller brush that I can have some more control over. So I'm not losing areas of that in a way that I don't want. Oh. Well, that was Pretty, pretty handy. Got number four here. I'm gonna get some yellow. Coming along here, trying to dry brush a highlight on the top of the scarf as it's flowing down across her face. I'm going to carry that highlight over to here. Dry brushing right here. Can you see I'm like starting to find some form now? Yeah. Now I'm going to get my yellow, my cad yellow, and it's going to give me high highlight. I'm going to come here and add some high highlights. Just painting this around. See? Now she's starting yeah. to have some shape in her scarf. As it flows around. Yeah. Let's give her some right here. Maybe a little reflection there. So fast. Once it starts to come together, it can be real fast. It can feel fast. I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to use my brush stroke direction on a curve, 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 curve to make that feel rounded. And really highlight the edge here. So you can really feel that rounding. Definitely pick a spot to accentuate, accentuate. Now I'm going to get some just red again. And I want to make sure that I have some pops of this bright color so that the scarf you know, feels very red. And flowy. And flowy. The flowy. All right. Doing pretty good, actually. Pretty yeah, happy. It's looking really nice. So now I'm going to let this dry for a minute, and I can come back and start thinking about my hair again, which is always fun to think about one's 
hair painting. So I'm going to grab this uh, number six spray here and I'm going to come in and start giving her hair some texture and some dimension. I'm going to sit, oh, my coffee's all cold again. That is the most, <laughs> man. I'm going to take my, this brush is dry and I'm going to get my yellow ochre and my green. And this is going to build a highlight. I'm going to come and begin to talk about this hair. I'm going to flow my brush directionality now a little more. We could say a little tendril of this hair can come in highlighted. Look at that. Come here, green. Get on my brush. Get on my brush. Dry, dry, dry brush. Maybe a little bit out here. Leaving that little shadow there. So see, we're starting to talk about the shape and flow of the hair. Maybe out here. Flow that highlight. But we want to leave shadow. And what we want to avoid initially is painting each individual hair. Initially. We may actually focus on a couple. Right? You can get your thalo turquoise. You know, if you think that there's an area that might need some shadow for any particular reason, like maybe underneath this leaf. If I lose the tip of my ear like I just did, I gotta go put it back. Let's put a little shadow right here. See? Form. Yeah. Get more green on. And keep flowing the hair. Grab my shadow. Let's put a deep one right here. Right next to this scarf, right? Yeah. Okay, so when I'm starting to get that, I'm going to fix what happened in my ear earlier. <laughs> All this. Let's just make sure we still have the tip of our ear. I'll lose it, that's irksome. Don't lose your ears. There we go. Don't want to lose it. Now I can take this smaller brush and I can come here and mix a little bit of my green like this and add quite a lot of white to the mix. And even yellow, but that it's the brightest color I have. And then I can come and add a few thought out strokes to feel more like hair. So I'm just stroking along and I'm curving in and I'm releasing curving in and releasing, curving in and releasing. Here at the highlight I could talk about it more and curve it in and release it. See how the hair starts to yeah. become hair. You know, kind of, I could come here from where it's all gathering and pulling out and talk about that flow of the hair. Like waves or water. Like waves or water is the hair. If I want to have an individual hair, I can come out here. Let's improve the flow of my brush and make sure it's all loaded to the bead on the end. So I've, I'm where I have control like this. You can come out here and be like, and eh, maybe there's a little bit of hair. See, now you painted some individual hairs. But because you're not trying to paint every single hair, it will weirdly feel more hair-like. Even if you're doing something more realistic, you're going to want to paint the value sets first and then work on the hair. We're almost done with her hair. 
We're literally down to her adornments. Wow, that's coming on right along. It, she did. Just paint those little bits. Just curl and flow. Curl and flow. Look, you can just take those out, and then those feel like hairs. Wow, yeah. You know, so feel like you can do those things. So now that pencil that I was so hot on about, watch how cool this thing is. So now I can be like, all right, so right here in the center, I want my dragon eye. Right? Right here in the center between her two eyes. And then I know I'm going to want a couple feathers. I can now sketch in pretty easily. All right. I have a couple feathers coming down here. And since the leaf is the top layer, that'll be the part that I paint, you know, last there. Another thing that I can do is I can sit there and say, my, f I have a feather that comes over here. Oh, yeah. Right. Do my little feather shape. And it can have a little friend that tucks out from underneath it like this. You know, and then I can say, oh, no, I've got another little one coming down here. Like that. Beads, maybe. And then maybe my last little thing of beads coming over here. And here's a cool trick. What I'm going to show you on the beads, I'm going to show you how you can use these little guys to make perfect beads and finish off this gem. I know. I've been painting a lot with Q-tips <laughs> lately. I know. <laughs> but they're kind of a cool tool, and I'm into it. I'm going to take a little of my blue and dust it on my brush. And I'm going to get it into my burnt sienna, because I don't want my first layer of burnt sienna to feel particularly bright. And I'm going to come. Actually, let's do the furthest, furthest um, feather? Uh, feather back. <laughs> I lost words. It's okay. Right? And I'm going to paint out its little brush stroke. And I'm going to let that be pretty dry and come out. I'm going to come right here and paint its little brush stroke and let that pretty dry and come out. Little blue, little brown. It's a pretty dark color. We're going to be building up. And its little friend here, same thing. Little brush strokes, narrowing them as I tip the brush. Adding a little gel because my paint is super dry. If that ever happens to your paint, you're like, I put paint on the brush, but it won't leave it. That's what happened. <laughs> your brush is your dry brush too dry. Don't dry brush so dry. So still just, you know. And remember, anywhere I have chalk marks I don't like, I can go back with my black gesso or black paint and just fix it completely. It's kind of cool. Fun stuff. So, next color. I'm going to wipe off my brush and just get my yellow ochre and a smidge of white here on the corner. And then you can just come in, stripe out a little coloring to your feather. Same other side. Look at that. Very, very wild feathery. She's a feather here. Nice, cool, wild featheries. Okay, you're a wild feather too. Not as wild as this one. This one's the wildest feather. So wild, that feather. And I'm just zippering this up.
while that's resting for a second, mm -hmm. I can come and get it's too small of a brush. Back to my number two that I'm loving today. All right. You're just cruising right along. I'm cruising right along. Cruising underwater. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's in a couple weeks. It's in 14 days. All right, so I'm going to come in and make a nice little center line down my feather of dark value. If you need it to be darker, you can add just a smidge of black to it if you want to. Just go with what you need to go with. And you can take that and put that down that center. Put that down that center. Let all that dry and rest for a second. And you can do a similar set of things down here with this grouping. So let's get our brown and blue again. And we're going to say, hey. I might actually move this so I have a better angle on it. Like you need it. Like you do. Like you do. And that's too dark. More brown. Just come in here. Hit the brown. His little friend. Same thing. Taking that brush stroke. Putting in that base. Put in those base paintings. There we go. Painting in those feathers. pretty good checking mm -hmm. on that going yeah I like it I'm okay with it it's good to me yeah getting my getting my brush dirty with that brown and getting my yellow ochre and that smidge of white and I'm gonna come and add my highlight color I have to turn again for control always work your area of control and comfort don't make yourself feel unhappy in your art practice. No. No. Don't let yourself or others make you feel unhappy in your art practice. Oh, that would not be good. Probably in your life. Actually, <laughs> I would extend that to your life. <laughs> so once you have those stripes in there, then you've got kind of this really cool looking pattern. Yeah. Right, you're starting to see your feathers come to life. I need it. You're like, man, that purple's been out a long time. I know. It's going to be so skint. <laughs> and I'm just going to make sure my feathers have their nice ridge bone. Little little pipe. This is the circulation I think that comes down the feather. Hmm. So once I have that, I'm going to actually take a little of my red and my yellow and mix it into my brown because I want to warm up that brown. And I'm going to take this smaller brush and just sort of lightly dust oh, oh, this streak. Sorry, John. That's okay. You're so sweet. <laughs> He's like, you skip around. Doesn't help him. I'm going to come over here, babe. I'm dusting. I'm just enforcing this patterning, what we're seeing. See? Enforcing the direction and feeling of the feather. Don't we love it? Going to come down here? Just keep that, you know, happening. I feel like these down here, if I may make a suggestion, would be happier with even more ochre on them. Will pop a little more with even more ochre. So just make sure that they have enough value to stand out as they are. Now, I'm not going to rinse my brush, and I'm going to get some white right on it. And at the tip of these, 
I'm going to take some off white. Yeah. Off more off white than that. That's too bright. And uh, add a little white to the tip of the feathers. Okay, come here. Which way? I'll come down this way. All right. Got it. Just adding a little tip of white to the feather. Having a little trouble getting my angle. That's okay. You can just move around. I'm, I'm watching. It's a weird day for me. To Here we go. It's a nice day. It is a nice day. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my purple in my blue. Purple in my blue. Mix them together. I can't believe the purple is still good. And I'm going to just paint in the first layer of my dragon ambulant. First layer of the dragon amulet. Nice? Nice. Yeah. Now I'm going to just rub off my brush and get more blue. I'm going to grab a little bit of white from wherever it's near me. And along this cord, I'm going to go stroke. These are going to be about, it's going to look about, oh gosh. What is that? A quarter inch, eighth of an inch. And when I come here, I'm going to foreshorten it as I come around the corner. Now, this has a little bit there. We wouldn't see it. Take this one around. This one's thick again. Comes around here. This is the blue cables. This one has a little bit down a bit. And then at the end, is going to have these little strings that come down. Wipe off your brush, get a little bit of white, then come here and highlight. The wrap. Because this is wrapped hair, right? Or in my mind when I made it, it was, I go to the Renaissance festivals. So that's how that goes. I'm just pulling one cord forward by highlighting it. See? Yep. I see. She's Pushing that one back by not. Uh, yeah. You're, you're, you, I see you kind of, you made some strokes in one direction and then kind of blended them out. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling these highlights down the cord and then blending it out. Uh. Letting this object pull forward and the other object pull back. Now, here's my trick. It's going to freak you all out a little bit. I just need to warn you. Do you? Mm -hmm. To get the clean <laughs> dot. <laughs> Mouth size your Q-tip. No, this is not what I do with all my Q-tips on my Q-tip paintings. I don't go, mm, I would run out of spit. I get really good Q-tips. But for this very precise dot. You should make them. You just gotta, You got to do it. Okay. They're going to be able to genetically identify you later. <laughs> oh, put out way too much gold. Oh, there's a pot of gold. Here's a puddle of gold. See how I'm doing that right there? Uh-huh. Just on the tip. Dot. Dot, dot. Do I think this gold is worth it? Yes, I do. It is incredibly opaque. Many of the gold paints in acrylic that are out there are like transparent. What they should say is kiss a gold. We thought about giving you some gold, but then changed our minds. Any other thing than gold paint. This stuff that's in my description below is gold paint. There is another product, Daniel Smith's a gold gesso for acrylics. They discontinued it for a little while and I actually cried. And it's back. <laughs> that will also work. <laughs> Just my two cents on that topic. See how that's giving me nice pearls? I do. 
All right. So I'm going to let that have a minute because I'm going to use the other side of this. And while I'm here, I'm going to get a little white and blue to make a highlight here and make sure that down here I have a few little strands that are flicking out. See that? Yeah. Because that feels nice. I like it. I'm going to get a little like of too. my blue and purple and a bunch of white. And I'm going to come and make a mess with me. radiating <laughs> circle of highlights out here on my dragon gem. See this? I do. Radiating. Radiate. Yeah, man. Be, be the reflection that you want to see. And we still haven't found that Indian yellow, have we? Hmm? We still haven't found the Indian yellow. What do you mean? The one that was went where missing. it's gone? Yeah. No, I have no idea where that paint went. That is the mystery of this episode. <laughs> of what will she do next? <laughs> I don't know, but you know what I did? I lost some paint. We're going to find it. I'm going to take my charcoal pencil and I'm going to just put in my leaves. And my leaves are real simple, they're kind of based off of a maple. So, you know, I'm going to want to covering what I've got going on in my feathers. And generally they have five points. So it's best to give yourself that guide when you want to draw them. And I just kind of make that maple leaf shape. You just, just freehand that in. I just freehand it in. But if freehanding is not your deal, man, don't worry about it. Because, again, you have the traceable where you will have leaves that have been drawn for you. <laughs> it will be pre-leaved. Pre-leaved! <laughs> don't leave because you don't have leaves. Just hit the pre-leaves. Leave because you're like, oh my gosh, that woman talks a lot. I was like, when people write me that, because I'm like, yup. That's how I explain the painting. <laughs> 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 Otherwise, it's just me showing you me painting quietly. Which, hey, that could be a whole channel. I just show you that I paint quietly. Seems like there are a lot of those out there, though. All right. So when I'm happy enough with my leaf, some basic leaf shape. Who uh, isn't happy with in. a leaf? I'm like, oh, messy, messy leaf. All leaves come in many different ways. They curl up and they're not sure. even. Sure. I'm going to take a little of my uh, brown. I'm leaf supportive. And just pour, pour, start painting in a leaf shape. This leaf is here, and that's where he lives. He's got to be a whole lot of colors, too. You know what I need to put out? Uh, a little more brown. More brown? More brown. More brown. Maybe a little more yellow ochre. Just a smidge, because I'm almost at the end of my painting. Just a smidge. Like, literally almost at the end, man. Well, we've had a huge crowd of people here. We've had lots of new people here from all over the world. Lots of our old friends have been here. It's so it's been really nice. And the moderators have all been here. So it's, it's just been nice to see everybody. It is always nice to paint with everybody live because, you know, we can do questions. Remember, we're going to meet up with you guys after the show on the website. Live will be in the live chat. John and I will both be there answering questions. John had an idea of what he wanted to do. Well, so yeah, we're going to go out to theartsherpa.com afterwards. And we're going to hang out for 20 minutes. And we're just you know we're gonna go out there and just hang out and chat today, I think. Just hang out and chat. Just wanted to be able to just you know we'll come out for twenty minutes after the show, make sure we ca try to you, let you catch up on any of the questions that you may have missed, and you know they they turn this chat off here uh, like really shortly after the show, just barely enough time for Cinnamon to get out of her headset and for us to turn the cameras off. Uh, you know, the Decide what link I forgot to add <laughs> in the live thing that I've got to add in a rush. So we're going we're gonna to go jump out on uh, our website chat and hang out there for a little while so that we can try to catch some more questions. So don't forget to join us out there on theartsherpa.com. Like you do. Like you do. Like you do. And if we're you don't. so weird. If you don't, you should be doing. Yeah. That's a, it's an exciting place to be. So I'm taking my cad <laughs> red and my yellow ochre <laughs> the and website. my burnt sand, and I'm just painting in my leaves in fall colors, what I'm trying to do. And I've added some white so I get some imp improvement on my coverage. Let's see, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to come in and add some more layers in a second. I just need leaf sort of painted on. Yes, there's. Now, on this one, I'm going to take my burnt sienna 
in my phthalo green and I'm going to in the center of this make a very dark kind of fall green. This leaf is very dark in the center. I think that leaves, um, now I'm going to get some just right on my, my brush. I think the leaves in fall are a bunch of colors is my feeling on it. So I just tried to make sure on her leaves they were a bunch of golds and reds. Like I'm going to grab some yellow ochre now. They're fall colors. Yeah. They were just very fall-like. And then I really enjoyed using the gold leaf to define these leaves more decoratively. Mmm. Right? So you're leafing the leaves? I'm leaf. Yes. He had to hear this joke when I was doing it. I'm leafing the leaves. I got this leaf a little close to that gemstone. But whatever. It happens. It tilted. And you know what? By the time I finished embellishing the gemstones. If you are by the, um, if you go into the big art quest group on Facebook, um, I had a suggestion for places that you could find uh, other fantasy gemstone ideas. You know, I'm not insulted by that because it's cool, man. Just adding a little red to my leaf. I'm going to go a little yellow. That's going to pop. Look at that. That pops. Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to fall it up. We're going to be coming into that soon, aren't we? We're almost, we are. We're going to kick out summer through all the paintings you guys voted on, and then then we're going to be like right around the corner, falling it up. Fall, yep. So while this is drying, I'm going to come get my gold leaf. I'm going to get all Put the water right off my brush because I don't want to be having any problems. I'm going to just carefully paint around Wrong button. my dragon eye. Around my dragon eye. Uh, 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 around my dragon eye. Uh, 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 uh. Lots of ways to paint metallic gold. Um, this is a decorative one. Normally you would just look for the lights and shadows and reflections on a metal piece of jewelry and paint those. If you wanted to look highly realistic. But I like the metal paint on the canvas. And I've been asked to talk about that and show that. And so this is that. I really think this is one of those places where, you know, it's tough to do the economy. If you've got to do the economy metallic, paint it yellow ochre first and then add your metallic on top to get uh -huh. a similar look. Because it's super transparent. How do you join the Big Art Quest? Well, you just show up is one. <laughs> show up is good. Two of these live events, which we do on Thursday. We have a group, The Big Art Quest on Facebook, which is a safe space for you to show your progress, your journey, um, and the stuff you're working on that's quest related. It's for quest related stuff. Um, not really a good group for promoting like fine art. It's really about, you know, you guys talking to each other about your experiences on the quest, supporting each other on the quest, yeah. and sharing that part of the journey. We have a, we have a whole section of our website all about it. So you can go through and see all the quests because Big Art Quest started 2016. This is 2017's quest. It's free. It's up forever. It's just there for you hmm. if you want it. If you'd like to know these things about art. Yeah. So thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> my mouth size and my Q-tip. Getting it. No, that's just. You know, I used to do this with my brushes, but that's deadly. Don't so, do it. And then you're just getting all the little fibers to stick together is what you're doing. Yeah, I am. I'm just. They, again, when I when I do my Q-tip painting, swear, I don't do that. That's not my trick. I just buy really good Q-tips. <laughs> but it does help. <laughs> this, for this type of thing, because I'm getting such a precision dot on the trees when I'm doing my Q-tip paintings, I don't need a precision dot. But here I want a precision dot because jewelry is about symmetry often. Mm. Not always, just often. Often it's about symmetry. Got to let that dry a little bit. While I'm letting that dry a little bit, I think my leaves here are dry enough to be leaved. So I like to just do all my veins in the gold leaf. Because I feel like then that makes it look fancy. Yes. Right? Maybe you don't feel that way. Maybe you're like, I think that is the weirdest thing. And then you know what? If you don't like a thing I do in my painting, guess what you get to do? Change it. Change it. Whatever you like. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to be insulted. I'm all good. I'm having a good time. I get to teach art on YouTube. Your canvas. It's your canvas. Seriously. It's your canvas. You're all good. I'm just here to help out. 
All right, so I'm gonna make some little veins coming down that little leaf, and then this little leaf has gold veins. This is from a magic oak tree. I've just decided right now. Clearly. Mm -hmm. Just right now. This is the magic oak that dragon forest fairies all depend on for their life's force. Has anyone named her yet? There's I been a so. lot. There's been a probably two or three hundred name suggestions that have come that's through. That's fantastic. <laughs> Be sure and just leave those all over the place. And then yeah. if you have a name, you're like, oh, man, that's her. Oh, yeah. You Let know? us know. Yeah, definitely. Vote it up. Like and it then, up. Um, you know, hopefully by next uh, really long art quest. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know we have 15-minute art lessons. Don't freak out that they're all like this. <laughs> we got some, some short ones. We have some short. We have a playlist that's 30 lessons. Under 30, though I think we've exceeded 30 lessons. Yeah. But it's the 30 under 30 playlist that's now like 45 under 30. <laughs> so, you know, we keep it kind of a, a range of stuff. I think we're at about an hour and 45 minutes for this one today. Really? Yeah, not too much. That's too not bad. even bad for this kind of painting. No, I'll have to go over and look at the exact clock. But this I'm is great. Sure. Okay, I'm into that then. Yeah. All right. So now that um, I've got this here, I want to add a little of my um, cad red over the purple. So I'm going to put a little cad red flecking out for my dragon eye. Help it feel dragony. Not too much because I want it to feel overall purple. See? So there you go. So really you're just having to finish up her jewelry here, huh? Yeah. I'm basically putting in highlight. Watch. I'll show you highlights. Where'd my dotting tool go? I don't know. Where'd your dotting tool go? Where did my dotting tool go? Dotting tool, I love you. Where did you go? <laughs> you helped me out, and I really need you so. What did I do with it, John? I don't know. I'm going to look around. I can see. Maybe we'll find the uh, the missing yellow paint with I'm the dotting tool. I'm going to find drill. the missing yellow paint. I have a gremlin. I have started something with the fairy folk, and they are having at me. That it's is what has happened. To go ask Kelly Black to help me out here. Do I have to come over and look for it? You're not. You should talk to the people, and I will come look for it. I'm freaking out a little bit, y'all. <laughs> you guys can probably see it. You're probably scared of me. It's right there. It's there. Do you see it? It's just gone. Do you think it falls and then the dog takes it? I don't know. Oh, here it is. Look, there's two dotting tools right here. Look, right here. One. They're, you know. They're hidden. They're hidden, right? See what it is? Is they're blended with my they're, they're right here. Sherpa palette knives. <gasps> yeah, it's a thing. Working on those right now. Okay, all dotting hit, tool. All that stuff was hidden. So I have my dotting picture. tool, and I'm going to take, so on the Sherpa dotting tool, this comes in the Galaxy brush set. But basically what you're looking for in a dotting tool is two sizes of bead at least. So I put that on mine. You are welcome to paint with the nail dotting tool that you have, though. Though this is really cool. <laughs> so I'm going to come in <laughs> to the top of each of my pearls. I'm going to just put a little dot. That's my uh, my gold pearls reflection. It's the highlight on them. Just ping, ping, ping. See? It's a little touch that you can do to uh, make your painting feel finished and resolved. Add some extra specularity to the gold. Yeah. You do. It, 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 it will get your friends to be like, how did you paint that? You'll be like, uh, big art quest, guys. Come join it. Share everywhere. Tweet. Because art should be free and global, right? Mm -hmm. Art should be available to everybody around the world. Everybody. Everybody around the world should have access to good art education. We're, we're better species when we paint. What are you doing next? <laughs> Not paint it. Don't do the gold one. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to get just a little bit of blue paint. <laughs> like this. I'm going to come inside each of my little dots. And make a little gemstone here. These are little sapphires. Okay? Sapphires. Okay? Sapphires. 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 I'm going to get some of my dot. And I'm going to also dot the sapphires. Dot. You're going crazy. I am. Dot, dot, dot. Here. So now my sapphires have reflections. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I, have, I have accepted the challenge of this painting. Right? I think I'm going to take a little of my blue paint and my white paint and uh, fussily make some more reflections here. 
Just a couple Ooh, more I values. Like those. Okay. Because you, you have to paint the little irisy thing into it. I'm just f I'm being fussy. Yeah. All right. So the iris, I am going to use my um, fluid black paint, which is my gesso in this case. And I'm going to make a pointed iris, like kind of what you think of in a cat's eye. Paint that in. All right. So this is my dragon's eye. Oh, yeah. Gemstone. And it can be nice. You may find, oh, this is clogged up. You, ew, that got all over my hand. Ew, <laughs> ew. Yeah. It's like black poop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm going to grab a little of this. And you can come on just the inside if you want to and outline with black to define this space and help it to pop. You don't have to. If you don't have a very steady hand, feel like any element of this painting that you're like, you know, my hand is not steady and this is not going to be cool. You can skip it. Oh, yeah. I like the, when you line the, the, the jewelry. It makes it, it very, you know. Yeah, I want it to be focal. So I find that this creates that, um, creates that dynamic. Let's it really pop. It really does. All right, so when you're happy with that, get one of your teeny tiny little brushes. Get a little white. It's okay if it's not pure white because, you know, reflections. Reflections. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to take my eye and I'm going to go, this dragon eye has this reflection. It has some of this right here. Oh, yeah. And a little down here. And this eye doesn't have, you didn't put the yellow in this eye. No yellow in this eye. Yeah, so the other one had yellow. This one doesn't. That's the only really difference here. Oh, I did. I guess, yeah. I, got, I think I got more light you with the red. You did more purple. You more I red, did more yeah. purple this time. Sorry, guys. No, it's okay. I was Happens. Just, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's a little, that's right. why there's always just a little difference between these. Oh, uh, that was where I did the red is I just had some more orange and red in there. Yeah. So I'm just adding some of that. Another weird little thing that I'm seeing that might make this real cool, too. Don't do this if it doesn't work out. <laughs> oh, just a little bit of reflection down there. Oh, yeah. Just some glinting. <laughs> okay, yeah, I like that. So that, that, did, that did work out. That just makes it a little bit shinier and more, you know. Awesome. Yeah, you know what, though? What they're seeing is, let me do this. What they're seeing is, is that without that highlight, and that may be why I did that, and I see it in the thing, it is hard to see the center of the dragon eye. So watch this. Oh. I'm going to come back through. If ever you're in a painting and you have an element and you don't get it in maybe how you want it, but you see it's necessary, get a detail brush, a deep breath, and just work it in later. I'm going to flip this over because watch. Look at us go. We're not even held back by this stuff. Mistakes, whatever. We just keep painting till it all works out. We're not stressed. You're pretty good at this whole thing. Eh. I've done it a couple times. <laughs> we had a pretty good, pretty good party here with everybody today. I liked today. All right, there we go. I think we all like that better with a little bit of that kind of glowy highlight. Yeah. A little more iris sour on there. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's just what it needs. I need to sign it. You do need to sign. <laughs> Get your Sherpa dance on. Well, guys, thank you for coming and hanging out with us today. I mean, man, we've had a really big crowd here today. A lot of new people have come and hung out with us. And we're going to go over to the chat and our forums. On the on the artsherpa.com, right? Yep. And that way everyone can come over there and at, and, and chat with you and ask questions. You can questions. catch us there throughout the day sometimes. Yeah, we're generally, we try to but hang out But we're for there. sure going right now. Yeah, we're going to go right after the show. We're going to make a point of that after the show is try to come over and hang out so you so you guys can. Uh, In the case there was something where you were like, man, I asked John this 200 times and it didn't caps. I just, yeah, you know, there's so many questions that come by, guys. Yeah, thank really you, hard. thank you, thank you for asking so many. We love to try to get them all. I signed so, it in gold on my little thingy. I like it. Oh, yeah, your friends are going to freak out on your art now. <laughs> <laughs>
trust me, you drop a few of these on social media and people go, what, what, what? It's really fun. So bask in the glow. Oh I'll see you in the chat, yeah. right? Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Be look on the Outlook out Friday. I'm trying to do a Game of Thrones drop before the premiere. All right, guys. We love you guys.